Uh, what can you say about Rex and what you've seen from him on film of the times that he's gotten to play this season? Just what your thoughts are on Rex at, at this point? Well, I don't want to give away too much, Dan. It's a, I get the question, but, you know, there's other, there's other ears listening as well when we, when we talk about this stuff. But the, the thing that I will say is this. Rex has been with us from the beginning. You know, when I got here, uh, he was a January signee uh, with the previous class, okay? And he was one of the guys that we definitely wanted to honor that scholarship and bring those three individuals in. Um, he knows this offense as good as anybody, and it's just a matter of executing and doing things right and being consistent in what we do. So we feel like we have someone that has a lot of knowledge if he's going to go, go in there. Now we've got to decide if we're going to be able to execute and do the other things around him. Next, we go to Mark Larson. Hey, Coach. Uh, I want to go back to Tommy. Um, you've seen the reports, I'm sure, uh, that he's out for the season. Is there a chance uh, that, that that's true? First of all, I have not seen the reports, Mark. I haven't been on the Internet and all that other kind of stuff. But uh, we've had other guys that have been out for the season. I just haven't had the official report from the medical people. I saw him yesterday uh, in the team meetings, and I'm waiting for the official report from the medical people. And you expect that, like, soon, I would think? By what time? You expect it soon, that report? Oh, I thought you said by noon. Yeah, I should know something by, by today. Yes, sir. All right, just to follow up on that, then, um, you, you know, obviously starting quarterback, it doesn't look good. As you said, uh, your team uh, just got beaten by a team that was winless and you're underdogs again this week. What, what would your message be to your team and, and to, to Syracuse fans, I guess, right now that, that might be thinking the season's over? I would say think about Duke and what they did to us. Hey, you know, uh, after Saturday's game, I think someone asked you about what you can do to get the offense uh, in a better position to start capitalizing on all the turnovers that your defense is giving you. And you use the phrase, we, we need to have a change in philosophy. I'm wondering what you meant by that and if that is uh, a short-term thing or a long-term deal. I think it comes down that you need to gear everything towards your personnel. You can, you can say that you want to do something in a business, but if you don't have the employees or the product to do it, it's just a thought. And we, have, we know things that work and things that have not been able to work. And I think you have to make sure that, A, you're moving the program where you want to move it, and, B, you're giving them the best opportunity to win. And then, C, sometimes there's a balance between those two things, and then the head coach has to make the call. But those are, the, those are the things that you're normally trying to get done. Where is the program heading, and what is your best opportunity to win at this moment? So is the, is the offense that you talked about in December 2015 when you arrived here, the offense you're committed to after this season and in the long term? Absolutely. Hey, Dino, uh, in all the kind of craziness to end that Duke game with Tommy, I, think I kind of missed Sean Tucker getting dinged up. Um, obviously, you, you've, <laughs> you're down to your fourth guy there, um, and, and he's been really promising. Can you kind of tell us how he's doing and um, what the backfield's kind of looking like coming into this weekend? Still waiting to see what's going on with Sean. I think he's going to be okay. I think he's in better shape than Tommy, but I'm not a doctor. I'll get that report later on. And then, we're, you know, we're going to adjust to whatever happens back there, and that's the way we're going to do it when our other guys didn't show up back there. Somebody will, somebody will line up there and we're going to turn around and hand him the ball and either we've seen him do some good things before or we're going to be all sitting there waiting to see if he's going to do something that we've never seen before because it's a new guy. I think it was late in camp. It might have been Nate who asked you, could you foresee a situation in which you were so low on players that, you know, maybe you would think about not playing? I don't think you're at that point yet, but, you know, through four weeks, how – how difficult has this been? And is, is there anything you can really compare it to in, in your career? No comparison. I don't want to use the word frustration because I don't think that's – if you didn't think this was going to be a different type of year, you were really pulling the wool over your eyes. It's, one of, it's going to be very unique. And for those who survive, they'll be stronger than ever. So the whole thing is not to quit, not to give up, keep your knees bent, be ready to adjust and improvise, heartbreak ridge, okay, and when the smoke clears, still be standing. 
And there's some pride in still standing when this thing's all over because it's been a wild, wild ride. 